What's up, everyone? This is B, the Atlanta Logic Trainer. Uh, I made this video in response to a video that F Major posted that showed us all how to use machine as a external instrument inside of Logic, basically giving us the ability to sequence machine inside of Logic using Logic Sequencer and not using the sequencer that was built into machine. Once I got past that and was creating music in it and then had to go to separate the sounds for mixing or to create stems for mixing, um, I ran into a lot of issues. Um, hence the questions that I asked um, in response to his video. Uh, so through a lot of trial and error, I figured it out. I wanted to share it with everybody so um, you guys would know kind of what you need to do if you're going to use this workflow with machine and logic to make it work. So what you have to do is, um, the first thing you need to do is when you create that software instrument, the machine, when you first instantiate it, if you know that you're going to be separating the sounds and you're going to need to create stems, when you create it, you want to create a multi-output from the get-go, from the very beginning. I would just create my template with one of the multi-outputs anyway because you can still work in stereo. It's going to work in stereo from the beginning without you even choosing it. Even if you choose uh, multi-output, it's still going to work in a stereo version. So it really doesn't hurt you to do this even if you're not going to use it. But just in case you do, then go ahead and set it up this way. And definitely, if you know you're going to do it that way, always set it up. Create your template like this. Um, the, the problem is uh, with default instruments that come inside of Logic, like Ultra Beat, so forth and so on, you can change from a stereo to a multi-output at any point, and then you can separate the sounds, and it doesn't cause any problems. With the workflow that we've created here using a uh, machine as kind of an external instrument and setting up that uh, sound MIDI batch setup, when you if you create a stereo version of machine first, and then go back and change it, it throws everything out of whack. And you lose all the abilities that we had to control a particular group with a particular MIDI channel on all of these different external MIDI instruments. So again, set up machine from the beginning as a multi-output machine. Pick any one you want. I chose um, one stereo 16 mono. Now once that's set up, i open up my mixer here. Whenever you create a multi-output instrument in Logic, <laughs> at the bottom of your channel strip for that particular, uh, on the channel that that particular instrument is instantiated on, you get this plus button. This plus button allows you to create auxiliary channel strips that are directly associated with this particular um, instrument. Now, if you do that with this machine, the way we have it set up now, it breaks everything again. And that's where I was running into the problems. As soon as you do that, when you go back over to here, inside here, then these don't control different sounds as you go down. Like right now, it's controlling three different groups, depending on which one I, I'm on. So I had to figure out a workaround. It's a pretty simple workaround. You just click this plus button instead. Here, I'm going to hit this and I'm going to say I want six auxiliary channel strips. I'm going to make them mono um, and you'll see that I don't have a choice for my instrument right now so I'll just leave it on input because we're going to change it in a second anyway. So I create those. It gives me those channel strips. Now I need to associate these with machine. So now when I go here I can say instrument one which is machine and you'll see the 16 or 17 or how many outputs that you have set up for yours. So I'm going to say uh, output 3, change this one to output 4, change this one to output 5, output 6, and I don't think I need all of these but I'm just going to use them anyway, output 7, and then output 8. Now it's really simple process from this point right here. I'm going to bring my machine back up into view. Now, the way machine handles the routing uh, of your outputs, it has a lot of different gain stages, as F Major mentioned in one of his videos. Um, first of all, all of these sounds are located in groups. 
So in this particular group, the 808 kit that I have in here sends the group output to the master. I'm gonna turn all of my group outputs to none. I don't want any group output. So I'm gonna go here to this kit, go to group output. I'm gonna put that on none. I don't think I'm using this group, but I'm gonna put it on output none anyway. And then this one, I'm gonna put on group output none. Now, when I do this, you're gonna notice I don't have any sound because I've turned all of the sound off by changing the master outputs to none. But what I'm gonna do now is go back and I'm gonna play it and it's gonna light up here. And if you take uh, your controller out of MIDI controller mode and put it back in standard mode, you can see the drums light up that are playing in your different groups. Um, but right here I can see I need my kick. So I'm gonna take my kick, it's selected in down here in the sequence and I'm gonna go to sound, make sure it's on output here and you can also do all of this from the controller in standard controller mode. And I'm gonna assign it to not out one, but out two. And I'll show you why I didn't choose out one. Out one actually is just your stereo output right there. So when I switch it to out two, notice that it goes to outputs three and four. So I don't know how many of you have used uh, analog mixing consoles before, but when you set up an auxiliary and you're bussing things around, they go to two channels at once and you have to pan it to which one you want to go to an individual channel like three or four. So that's what we have to do. I'm gonna take that kick and I'm gonna pan it hard left, which is gonna put it in three, All right? And then what else do I have here? This clap. I'm going to take that clap. I'm also going to put that on two. And I'm going to pan that hard right. So now I have my kick here and my clap here. Then I'll just go to my next kit. And I see I got these two hi-hats happening here. I'm going to put those on. Oh, that's the master. I'm going to change that back to none. Go to sound, output, and I'm going to put those on three. I'm gonna pan that one that way. And I was using this one also. I'm gonna put that on three, pan that that way. Now you see those here. Finally, I'll go to my last group here. I'm using one other hi-hat here, select it, go to sound, output. And I'm gonna put that on, this be four. I'm gonna pan it hard left here. So now everything is separated. Let me hide machine. So on all my channels, everything is separated and I can actually mix here if I'm gonna stay in logic, you know, start panning things the way I want them. Or, you know, do any type of mixing you want. A lot of times you're gonna need to leave logic and take your things into Pro Tools or any other DAW to mix. So you're gonna need audio stems. Uh, we all know how to actually, well, hopefully you know how to do that from in machine if you've sequenced in there, but I'm gonna show you how to get it from inside of Logic uh, pretty much the same way and get the same results using this sequencing mode. And, and I love this because now when I wanna build my song, it's just as simple as copying and pasting this stuff or looping it or whatever I need to do. I can build my arrangement the same way I build my arrangement with all my other Logic instruments that I can add in here instead of building my arrangement and logic and then coming over to machine dealing with the scenes in there and trying to make it all match up and and all of that type of stuff so uh, once this is done what we're going to do to create to get those stems is we're going to um export we're going to go file export all tracks as audio files now before you do this there's something you need to do back here in your arrange area um Logic is not looking at these as tracks to bounce because they are external MIDI tracks, which Logic sees as it's talking to an external device like a Triton keyboard or a Roland Phantom or some physical keyboard MIDI device outside of your software that is sending MIDI to to trigger sounds and you're getting that audio back from some 
place either inside the software or on a mixing board. So it's not looking at these as things that it would bounce internally. On the other hand, it does look at this software instrument as something that it could bounce, but it's not going to bounce anything at this point because there's no region on this particular track, so it doesn't see anything there to bounce. Like if I go here to that function again, the shortcut, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen, it's Command, Shift, and E. It says nothing to bounce because there's no region here. So what we need to do is just put a little dummy region there. And that's simply done by hitting escape, choosing your pencil tool, creating a little one bar region. That's all you need to do. Um, now, depending on how long your song is, you want to move your end marker to that point. Otherwise, you just create, like right now, my song is really only, it's not a song, but this pattern is only really eight bars long. If I bounce my stems, I'm going to get stems that go all the way to 130 bars. So I'm just going to double click this make that nine bars it's going to pop down to there and now i'll use my well i'll go to the menu file export all tracks is audio files say bounce now when this comes up it's going to come to this window uh, first i'm going to create a folder to bounce it to i'm going to bounce it to my desktop new folder i want to call this uh 80s stems Let's say create all right, so I have a folder to bounce it into the 80 stems. You choose your format. You can choose between WAV, AIF, or CAF. I'm going to choose WAV. Uh, the bit depth usually takes the bit depth of the session. Um, this right here is important. It's a multi-output software instrument. I want it to be one file per channel strip. The default thing is one file per track. Don't get confused. These are tracks. So it will just do one file for this software instrument track. You want one file per channel strip which is associated with those auxiliary channel strips that we have in our mixer um, if you've got effects plugins you want to bypass you can check that if you want those included you leave it unchecked um, this is a pretty important button right here um, and the default setting for it is overload protection only i when i do workshops with logic or whatever i always get pro tools users and other software users to say you know my stuff doesn't sound as good coming out of logic as it does coming out of pro tools or what have you um it's it's not as loud as it is and people associate loudness with things sounding good which is not always the case but anyway what's happening is in all of your bounce features in logic bounce here which will bounce out your whole session bounce regions which bounces the actual tracks of bounce in place and then export where we're actually going to bounce out these stems you have a normalized function and the default setting is overload protection only what normalize does is it looks at your audio signal and it digitally brings your peaks to zero right so if it's on if you normalize it is on, if you have peaks that are at negative three, it's going to find those peaks and stretch them to zero, and it's going to raise all the other parts of your audio proportionately to that. If um, your signal is over zero, it's going to bring those your loudest signal down to zero, and everything else is going to come down proportionate to that. The default setting for overload protection only, only will do any normalizing if you have signals that are over zero so then it will bring all of those signals your peak signal down to zero and all the other signals down proportionally if the signal is under zero if your peaks are under zero it will not stretch it the best setting for this is off I don't like normalizing it eliminates all of those problems that people have where they think their signal is not as loud as it would be coming out of Pro Tools and it's not because it's turned your signal down so we're going to turn that off and then all you have to do is say bounce or save go to our browser <clears throat> and in our browser we go to our desktop go to the 80 stems there are all of your stems if I select them all I'll just drag them in here so you can see what we have here say create new tracks mute these so you can see what's going on here And there you have your audio stems that you can take into any software and start mixing them. Uh, F major, I appreciate you. Thanks again.